Spooky Spectre sings sonatas on Saturnalia in Serengeti. Uh, Hello. Why, why is it spooky? Yeah. Do you have ghosts on the mind? I I have ghosts on the mind. Really? Why, yeah. Like it's, I know it's it's inquiring minds want to know. Yeah. Is it because you watch House Hunter or not House Hunter? Ghost Hunters. <laughs> ghost Hunters. Ghost, well, that's kind of the same house thing. House Hunters. Ghost Hunters. As a What's realtor, as a realtor, yeah. If a house is known to be haunted, uh-huh. you must divulge that information. Are you serious? I don't know if that's fact, but I feel like it's in your best interest as a realtor to divulge that information to someone. Because I would hate to move into a house that's haunted and not know it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm fine buying the house if it's haunted, right? Because so you want to know it. I want to know it for sure. So that way, I know. I like oh, this. it's the phantasm upstairs that's mm-hmm. causing issues. Yeah. It's not my weird neighbors. No, it's the phantasm phantasm hey let me tell you why i have ghosts on the mind though my wife and i just returned from a great trip to san diego oh, welcome go home. if you have the chance it's a yeah. good place yeah. but uh, one of the things that we try to do every time we go on a vacation is we actually try to visit a ghost tour mm. or a haunted mm. tour if you will um and in doing so they talk uh, typically they take you around the city or wherever it is that you're at and they tell you about the area they tell you the history of the place or they tell you about some like some different places that you actually see or experience ghosts. Uh, so I, I got to thinking about this, yeah. and um, there are, uh, according to my research, seven different kinds of hauntings. Oh my gosh! Um, most of them have to do with demons. My research does not ever get to seven different. But kinds. but we're not going to get into those. We're going to get into two. There's two different kinds of hauntings I want to discuss. Number one is what they refer to as a residual haunting. Okay. We and resi- back. Yeah. They, well, no, no. Uh, residual hauntings basically means it's a moment in their life that they keep playing and playing and playing oh, over and over again. Groundhog. Day. So like, yeah, kind of like Groundhog yeah. Day. Like if I was a ghost and every single day at 3 a.m. I woke up to pee, which I. I've got issues. I do too. Anyway, if I do that, then when I die, that's one of the things. If that's something I do all the time, then you do it. Then people are going to come into my room in the middle of the night. Oh my gosh, there's a ghost walking into the bathroom to pee. Yeah. Anyway, residual hauntings are just hauntings that happen. They play the same thing over and over again. The other kind of haunting is what we refer to as an intelligent haunting. Now, intelligent hauntings are a little different. They're more interactive. They're more of the engagement. Which is what we're going to talk about with with the people in the house. They they actually interact with them. They try to scare them, or they try to get them to be their friend, or something like that. But but today we want to talk about the difference between engaging and engagement. Okay, so I like this, and I like this analogy a lot. Thank right. You. Um, so engaging is okay. Yeah, it's it's residual. It's the yeah. same things over and over. It's kind of like it's the activities. Yeah. So like when you go to work and and you in, and if you're engaging with your employees, it means you're saying like, oh, how was your day? How was your weekend? Um, are you gonna come to the uh, such sal- and such party? Yeah. Do you, you even care though? Salsa. Come to the salsa bar. Can I ask you that? Do you even care, or is it just like, hey, this is the formality? Um, I do like the food. If yeah. there's food, I'm like, I'm there for the food, but I'm mainly there for the food. And it's like, how can I get the food and get out as fast as possible without having to talk to people? Right, like ghosts running away. Like, oh my gosh, they're here again. Yeah, here mm-hmm. they go again. So like, engaging is okay, right? Like, But once again, it's surveys, it's activities, it's just routine things that happen. And engaging with your employees doesn't mean that your employees are engaged. No. It's they not hate, engagement. It, it's, not, it's, not exci- it's not exciting. It's not something that I look forward to. Yeah. On the other hand, yes. you have engagement. Okay, so what is engagement? Engagement means I'm actually caring about that person. When I say, Jared, how are you doing today? Everything else goes away and I'm actually paying attention to you. I'm listening to what mm-hmm. you're saying. I care about you as the, as the person. Yeah. And it's a huge part of your culture, right? If, if someone comes to my office and just asks, how are you doing? And, and I know they don't care. They're just doing it for the formality. That's the, that's the, the go with the motions, right? That's the engaged part of it. But the engagement is, I'm actually going to see who this person is and talk to this person. I like that. And it, re, it in, involves more than just activities in the office. Okay. So like these meaningful conversations yeah. is a really good illustration of engaging versus engagement. It's really easy to have, have an engaging conversation about how your weekend was and what you did and what you thought the Packers did. Sports ball. Do they do things? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, but then it's a totally different thing to have 
uh, someone who's engaged engagement conversation with someone where they truly know that you care about who they are and you're trying to get to kind of the root cause of who they are as an individual and to their soul and what speaks to them. And when you have someone that's that engaged, that is when employee engagement really takes place because they are seen for who they are and what they can contribute to the company because of the individual that they are, not because you're having a conversation about something that you may or may not have in common. Yeah. Well, and millennials love this too, right? They love yeah. the, the, the environment where they're actually feeling like there's engagement taking place and not just, like I said, going through the motions. And I think this all, can, this, this can be shown a lot as well in the interview process, yeah. right? When I'm interviewing someone, if I'm engaging them, um, you know, that's good. But if I'm actually showing engagement, again, kind of having that meaningful, meaningful conversation, asking questions to get to know them as a person to see if they're a right cultural fit for my company. Mm -hmm. Millennials love that. They love that they feel like they're part of something yeah. because I actually know who they are. I took the time to get to know them. Yeah. I also heard a study recently that said that if you have 50 people on a team, that one person can be toxic enough to ruin all 50 people. And that's a crazy stat, right? Yeah. One sour apple can ruin the entire batch, up to 50 people. Um, and that's why you wanna make sure that everyone is engaged. Because if they're engaged in what they're doing, then that one person won't have the same impact on them. But if they're somewhat engaged or somewhat disengaged, then those people are definitely going to fall to the disengaged category because the person engaging with them is the toxic in, uh, individual. And that's why you need to take your engagement to a new level to where they truly are valued for who they are, just like millennials. Yeah, and you have to, you have to find out what truly motivates them. Oh, yeah. Because right, it can't just be money. And, and these days, I, I'm motivated by money. I enjoy money. Everybody loves I'll money. I'll take more of it. That's dollar, fine. dollar, dollar but, bills. Yeah. <laughs> Is that Kanye? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, but what it comes down to as well is we have to find out what truly motivates people. Is it money? Okay, fine. Is it actually that feeling of being part of a team that feels accomplished? Or is it being part of the, the, the 50 team person that yeah. that actually, you know, feels like they're dedicated to their job and, and people around them are dedicated as well? They can they can ruin things or they can they can help things. Okay, so, so don't have an engaging workforce, have an engagement workforce that seems right put it in ghost residual terms. hauntings you don't want residual hauntings those are boring you want intelligent hauntings so that they interact with you and so that they try to form a relationship with you whether good or bad let's face it we're all gonna get there someday right what but uh, dead dead we're gonna be we're gonna be dead yeah ghosts are not real yes, they are. Um, why would you say that i mean ghosts are real <laughs> You know what? We're done. I do believe in ghosts. We're but, over this. But Thank like, you. I don't know. End. Real Thanks estate agent, everybody. can you tell me if there's a haunting in my house? Like, Cal, get out of here. I still love you, but Cal, I'm really annoyed right now. Thank you, everybody, for your time. He's really awesome. Don't forget to subscribe. Mm -hmm.